Hernan Jorge Crespo was born on the 5th of July 1975 in the neighborhood of Florida in the Buenos Aires province of Argentina, an area of South America that has produced some of the continent's finest players. As with almost every child of Argentina, Hernan's life revolved around football, and he began attracting the attention of scouts. By the age of 17, local side River Plate had welcomed him prior to the start of the 1993-94 league season. At six foot tall, with a leaner body type and a natural eye for goal, River's coaches identified him as someone who could be a complete centre forward. In 1993, Crespo debuted for the side and instantly impressed, scoring a variety of goals. During the campaign, the striker featured 25 times, netting 13 en route to the Apertura League title. Hernan flourished over the next few years as he grew into the number nine role and became a true target man. As he began to better understand his responsibilities off the ball, Crespo's positional sense improved and amongst his stunning strikes, the forward converted easier chances by outsmarting defenders with clever movements. Throughout their 1996 Copa Libertadores campaign, he contributed 11 goals in 11 appearances for River, and in the two-legged final, Crespo bagged a brace to overcome CD America in the home fixture and claim the Copa. The young forward received his national team call-up for Argentina, and in February 1995, he earned his first cap against Bulgaria in an international friendly. A year later, he was selected for the Olympic Games in the US, where he excelled in the Albi Celeste shirt. Braces against Spain and Portugal drove the side to the tournament's final, but Nigeria bettered the South Americans in spite of Crespo's mid-game penalty, his sixth of the Summer Olympics. As the global competition's joint top scorer, he had drawn the gaze of Europe, and after three years with River Plate, the 21-year-old marksman left his hometown to sign for Parma of the Italian Serie A. Under newly appointed manager Carlo Ancelotti, Parma were enjoying an exciting period with a rejuvenated squad filled with a healthy mixture of young Italian and foreign prospects. Crespo endured a challenging start to his new journey, Across five months of regular starts for the Gila Blue, he scored just one goal in 12 appearances. Ancelotti's sustained belief in his new acquisition met them both with chance and booing, yet the ex-Palmer midfielder refused to drop Crespo. The manager's commitment to his striker vindicated in early March 1997, when Hernan impressively converted a winning brace against Cagliari at Palmer's Il Tardini. This triggered a switch among the fans, who started to warm to the number 11 as he began to score more frequently for the side. Partnered in the attack by Enrico Chiesa, Crespo had netted pivotal goals against Perugia, Sampdoria, Roma and Atalanta to help the northern side become serious title contenders. The South American season highlight came in May when he scored all three goals versus Vicenza for his first Italian hat-trick. A couple of dull one-all draws against league juggernauts Milan and Serie A leaders Juventus cost them the Scudetto, as the Bianconeri concluded the campaign with just two more points than Parma to lift their 25th national title. Crespo concluded his debut season in the north of Italy with 12 goals from 27 appearances, but his 11 scored in 13 games from March to June established the Argentine marksman as one to watch out for. Consistent goal scoring continued into 1997-98 for the striker, however the team generally performed worse, crashing out of their first ever Champions League venture and falling to sixth in the Serie A. With 12 league goals to his name, Crespo was the Gila Blues' top scorer domestically. Pero Hernán Crespo consigue el gol del Parma, consigue el segundo. Yet more was to come for the Argentine in the upcoming year. In the months leading up to the 1998 World Cup, Crespo bagged another triple against FR Yugoslavia and was subsequently selected for the squad. However, he was considered a backup striker for Gabriel Batistuta and only featured once off the bench. 
Palmer's prior league finish had qualified them for the UEFA Cup, a tournament in which they prospered. Under new management Alberto Melisani, the marksmen netted five goals on their road to the final and made 20 goal contributions in the Serie A to aid Gillablu in achieving a fourth place finish. Supported by the club's new midfielder Juan Sebastian Veron, Crespo scored six in seven matches throughout the Coppa Italia to get their second final of the year. In said match against Fiorentina, the number nine slotted away the early opening goals in both the home and away legs, the latter of which was an audacious flick at the Artemio Franchi. This rigorous contest ended as a three-all draw, but Palmer's two away goals meant they edged out Viola and gave Hernan his first taste of Italian silverware. Within a week, the side travelled to Moscow for the conclusion to their European crusade. They met Marseille with a fierce desire for the cup and pressed the French side from minute one. Crespo intercepted Laurent Blanc's lazy pass to the keeper who the South American cleverly lobbed to give the Italians the lead. Paolo Vanoli doubled the advantage 10 minutes later and in the 55th minute, the number nine allowed Veron's cross to run under his legs and into the path of Chiesa who volleyed home their third to seal the victory. Their achievements domestically and abroad certified their 1998-99 season as one of Palmer's most decorated ever and Crespo had played a major role in their success. Netting 28 goals in 45 matches, this was the strikers' best year yet, which included two Serie A hat-tricks, six assists and generally dominant performances. Confident and keen to push for the Scudetto, Melisani's side started well in August, defeating Milan for the Supercoppa Italiana with Crespo scoring the equaliser. What followed was an underwhelming campaign for Gillablu, seeing early exits in the Coppa Italia and Champions League. The forwards' reliable goal scoring didn't slow down, despite the side's underwhelming form. He often rescued points for Palmer, whose defensive struggles throughout the season gradually slipped them down the table. A disappointing fifth place finish prompted Crespo to make a move. The summer of 2000 saw the world transfer record broken when the Serie A champions Lazio paid 35 million for the ace goalscorer. Sven Goran Eriksson had built an impressive squad, more complete and balanced than Palmer's, and alongside the likes of Pavel Nedved, Simone Inzaghi and Veron, the striker fit in well. Yet, this squad was on the brink of separation as the Biancocholesti were under some financial strains, having spent heavily over the past 10 years which forced club president Sergio Cragnotti into debt. In September, the Argentine demonstrated the underappreciated aspect of his game against Inter in the Supercoppa, controlling the offensive line and acting as the second striker to Claudio Lopez. Helping Lazio to an epic 4-3 victory. Domestically, Valdanito continued to score addictively, netting 26 league goals in 32 matches as not just Lazio's top scorer, but the league's. Again, his efforts proved futile in securing his elusive first Scudetto as Dino Zoff's side conceded the title to local rivals Roma. Lazio had some issues to address. Tight finances led to the selling of some key attacking players. The loss of these stars cost Crespo the support going forward that he blossomed with in the prior year and Lazio began to suffer more defeats when the Argentine picked up intermittent injuries throughout the season. As a result, he only featured 22 times in the Serie A but still managed a respectable 13 goals in the blue shirt. A few of Zoff's summer signings struggled to find their footing and after another mid-season managerial change, speculation over the remaining big-name players grew. Out of the UCL for the upcoming year and no longer considered title competitors, 
Lazio's economics seemed more desperate than ever before and let go of Alessandro Nesta, their best centre-back. By this time, considering his vocal disappointment with the Roman club, Crespo was presumed to be sold also. With nine goals, Hernan was Argentina's top scorer in the 2002 World Cup qualification, boosting the side to their peak of their group. In Eastern Asia, Crespo had a frustrating time. Batistuta was still preferred as the number nine by Marcelo Bielsa, and the team wasn't inspiring confidence. The Lazio style was subbed on in all three matches in the group of death against Nigeria, England and Sweden. One minute into Crespo's appearance, Anders Svensson stole the opener with 30 minutes remaining, and the substitute's 88th minute equaliser failed to save Albi Celeste from a shocking group stage exit. Batigol, in the wake of the upset, retired from international duty and Crespo took over as the number nine, now the country's leading striker. The 27-year-old was deemed a world-class striker at this time and, particularly in Italy, the demand was high. Inter won the race for the Argentine, having bid farewell to Ronaldo that summer. In Milan, Crespo united with Christian Vieri to form a vicious attacking duo. The pair complemented each other well, and with the club's lack of forwards, a disciplined balance was established. Christian and Crespo were successful for the first half of the season, but their jubilant run was cut short when the Argentine's injury returned and reduced him to the sideline. Between mid-January and April, he didn't step foot on a pitch for the Nerazzurri. The long break just made Crespo more hungry, and in his return on the 19th of April, he secured the win for Inter against Brescia, and in his final four matches, he went on to score three. Another season of near misses irked him, and when Chelsea's new owner, Roman Abramovich, came calling, Inter failed to convince Crespo to stay, and in August 2003, he moved to London as the Russian billionaire's first marquee signing. Managed by Claudio Ranieri, he battled with Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank for the striker's place in the team, and when selected, he proved that he was still at that elite level. His champagne moment came against Arsenal, bending a right-footed stunner from distance past Jens Lehmann. Fantastic response from Hernan Crespo. 12 goals in 31 across all competitions, though far from awful, was one of the Argentines' slowest seasons yet, spending a lot of the time out of the squad as the Blues' reserve striker. Ranieri's second-place finish was inadequate in the eyes of Abramovich, and he replaced the Italian with Jose Mourinho. The special one had plans to rebuild, which didn't feature the South American, and he was loaned in July 2004 to Ancelotti's AC Milan. The Italian champions were on a determined European expedition, driven to reclaim their 2003 title. In their 4-0 demolition of Shakhtar, Crespo helped himself to a brace, elevating the Rossoneri to the top of their group. While first-choice marksman Andrei Shevchenko was out with a facial fracture, Hernan became Ancelotti's main man for their round of 16 matches versus Manchester United. Crespo pounced on a poorly handled rebound to silence Old Trafford and steal a vital away goal. In the equally tight second leg, the number 11 answered Cafu's cross with a perfectly guided header, and again, Milan maintained a clean sheet to progress into the final eight where they met their city rivals. Inter were outplayed across the two legs, but in the semis, PSV gave a surprisingly determined performance and pressed the Rossoneri to the very end. Yet, still, the Italians did enough to make it to the Istanbul final. In his first ever Champions League final, the Argentine shared the strike force with Shevchenko and the pair were supported by Kaka. Crespo scored Milan's second with a simple tap-in answering the Ukrainian square ball across the box. Only five minutes passed before Kaka turned Gerard 
and exquisitely played the striker through for his brace. And Milan now playing football out of this world. The number 11's clinical double should have buried the hopes of Liverpool as they strolled off 3-0 down. But the Reds returned to make the most famous comeback in European football and Gerrard lifted the club's fifth title. Undoubtedly the darkest day of Crespo's career, he has since disclosed that his resulting sorrow almost drove him to quitting the sport. Having failed to sign a world-class striker in the 2005 summer window, Mourinho recalled the crestfallen striker to compete with Drogba for a place in Chelsea's team. The Argentine's first league appearance came as a substitute against Wigan in the Blues' opening league game. With his left foot from distance, Crespo wrapped a stunner to break Mancunian hearts. Oh, what a goal! Similar to his prior stint in London, the number nine scored sporadically and again failed to fully adapt to the English style. Ultimately though, his 10 league goals had aided Chelsea in holding on to the title, his first European league triumph. Across two years in England, Crespo struggled to rediscover the form that had elevated him to world-class prestige and is generally regarded as a Chelsea flop. Though the silverware brace in his second spell could suggest otherwise. The forward later explained that though he had enjoyed playing for Chelsea, a personal tragedy impacted him emotionally. His family lost two children during his tenure, which obviously distressed he and those around him, affecting his overall experience in England. As Abramovich gathered funds for Mourinho to eventually splurge on Shevchenko, the South American rejoined Inter in the summer of 2006, while still on the Blues books. Loaned for a two-year spell, he wanted to prove himself to the Nerazzurri, who had previously seen an injury hampered Crespo and not the elite goalscorer they were promised. The 2006 World Cup was imminent, and following his exceptional spell in qualifying, during which he netted seven goals to become the nation's career-scoring leader in World Cup qualifiers, he was determined to shine in Germany. The emerging talents of Lionel Messi and Carlos Tevez threatened the number nine's place in Jose Peckerman's starting 11, but Crespo was trusted to lead the line in their opening fixture against Ivory Coast. A Messi deflection was poached by El Polaco, aiding them to a 2-1 victory. Their Argentine expertise was demonstrated on a whole other level versus Serbia and Montenegro. Crespo had provided a backheel assist for an incredible team goal before turning in their fourth at the back stick. With progression into the knockouts already secured, he was rested against Holland, ready to step up in their round of 16 Hispanic clash with Mexico. Having gone 1-0 down to El Tree in six minutes, Crespo answered the cries of his nation by touching in Juan Roman Riquelme's corner and levelling the scoreline. Eventually, Maxi Rodriguez volleyed Argentina into the quarterfinals against Germany, but the Europeans were a formidable side and came back from Roberto Ayala's header to extend the game all the way to a shootout. Crespo had been subbed off inside the initial 90 and was powerless from the sidelines as the Germans edged out La Albi Celeste. The 31-year-old's hopes of the ultimate trophy faded completely with this loss to Joachim Löw's side and 2006 was his last World Cup. Under Roberto Mancini, the number 18 still managed to feature in most of Inter's matches throughout his second debut season, finding the back of the net at vital times to salvage victories. Versus Roma, Lazio against whom he bagged a hat-trick and Milan who they defeated 4-3 in one of the best Derby della Madonnina's to date. Valdanito linked up with both Zlatan Ibrahimovic and Julio Cruz regularly, with the Swede and he forming the league's most dangerous duo. As the club's top scorer in all competitions, Crespo played a key role in the Nerazzurri's 2006-07 Scudetto, overwhelming the Serie A with 97 points. Remarkable club performances 
granted him a spot in Alfio Basile's 2007 Copa America squad. Two goals in the first match were followed by upset. After putting away the spot kick that overtook Maradona's tally for Argentina, the ace marksman pulled a muscle in his right leg, marking the end of his tournament. The ensuing two years in Milan were less enjoyable personally for Crespo. The aging striker's game time was cut in half by Mancini, and he managed to only find the back of the net seven times in their campaign. Zlatan and Cruz led Inter to another consecutive Serie A title, and after the appointment of Mourinho in the summer of 2008, the end of El Palaco's Inter tenure was fast approaching and the Portuguese head coach only offered him two league starts, preferring the young Mario Balotelli to the 33-year-old, who was excluded from their Champions League squad. With a contract close to expiration, Crespo was spotted by Genoa as an ideal replacement for Diego Melito, who had moved the other way shortly before. The fantasy of playing again in the World Cup forced the striker's hand, and both parties accepted terms in June 2009. He featured in the Serie A, Coppa and Europa League for Il Rosso Blu, amassing seven goals from 34 matches until January when he made a romantic return to Parma where he had begun his Italian journey a decade prior. Expectedly, Valdonito was snubbed by his national side for the summer tournament and hugely saddened Crespo retired from international football, having collected 64 Argentine caps across three World Cups and converting 35 goals, making him the country's fourth all-time top scorer as of 2022. With the Gila Blue, he extended his career by two years, and in his homecoming season, Crespo was the club's top scorer at the age of 36, aiding Palmer to stay in the top flight. On the 2nd of February 2012, burdened with a couple of injuries and unlikely to feature much across the remainder of the year, the striker and the club mutually agreed to terminate his contract. The Argentine departed the club as Palmer's all-time top scorer, with 94 from 201 appearances, and retired having permanently etched his name into their humble history. Somewhat overshadowed throughout his career, Hernan Crespo was a world-class marksman and one of the most lethal goalscorers in an era blessed by ruthless number nines. After piloting two exciting underdog sides, the Argentine earned the big money moves, but, particularly in the Premier League, wasn't as prolific and has been labelled a Chelsea flop by some. Having worn both Nerazzurri and Rossoneri colours in his career, El Palaco never seemed interested by the politics and rivalries of the beautiful game, simply wanting to make the net ripple as much as possible. In his pomp, he was a quick forward, who could outpace defenders and open up space for a cross or pass, but he was also strong, able to run at players with power and go shoulder to shoulder with the opposition. Valdanito was a sharp, opportunistic marksman who instinctively pounced on every chance he could, capable of clinically finishing on either foot. In the box, he was a menace to defend due to his clever movement and he excelled at peeling off his marker for a header or tap-in. His aerial presence was a notable aspect of his game as he could time impressive jumps perfectly to meet the ball and accurately aim on target to beat the keeper. Shining in Italy, he was always going to garner comparisons to Gabriel Battistuta, boots that are near impossible to fill. But nonetheless, Crespo grafted a name for himself as one of Argentina's and Serie A's finest ever goalscorers.